Welcome to Spine Guy. I'm Dr. Brian Sue, a fellowship trained spine surgeon in Marin, California. The Spine Guy is a channel dedicated to making the complex spine simple for patients to understand. Today we'll be talking about lumbar degenerative spondylolisthesis. That's three really big words, or at least one big word, spondylolisthesis. And I promise at the end of the video, it'll be totally clear to you. I'll be posting new videos weekly, so hit the subscribe button to catch them as they come out. The word lumbar means low back which is this, there's the back, there's the belly. Degenerative means something that occurs with time. As people get older, everybody gets degeneration in their spine. If you were to get an MRI or an X-ray on anybody over 50, almost 75% would have degenerative discs, arthritis, etc. Spondylolisthesis is a fancy word for slippage. It literally means one bone slipping in front of another. So this is a normal lumbar spine. There's the back, there's the buttock, there's the belly. This is the sacrum, which is the big bone on the bottom. Lumbar five, which is L5, L4, L3. All the bones are supposed to stay nice and aligned at every position. So when a patient extends backwards or flexes forward, all these bones are supposed to stay stacked on top of each other like building blocks. There's not supposed to be any sort of abnormal motion. A spondylolisthesis means abnormal slippage, which means that what can happen over time is that one bone can slip in front of another. For example, I've kind of created it in this model, but this is the L4 bone and that's the L5 bone. And what can happen is the L4 bone and the entire spine above it can shift in front. And that typically happens because the little joint back here, which is called the facet joint over time, can develop arthritis and dysfunction, you get this abnormal disruption in the biomechanics of the spine, both at the disc level and at the facet level, and the spine is not moving as one unit. This part of the spine is falling forward. Degenerative spondylolisthesis is best diagnosed on x-ray because on x-ray you can actually see the bones slipping and sliding. As you can imagine, if the bones are slipping and sliding, what can happen is the nerves in the back can start to get pinched and you can start developing buttock and leg pain because the nerves going to the buttock and leg, which are the sciatic nerve, start getting compressed by the actual displacement of the bone. The picture on the left shows an absolutely normal spine. This is the L4 bone, L5 bone, that's the sacrum, so we call that S1. So the bone is a square and this is the back of that bone, back of that bone, and the back of that bone. I've drawn a line at the back of each bone. You can see that these lines really line up perfectly. This is somebody that has spondylolisthesis. So there's L3, L4, L5, and S1. And if you were to look at the back of each bone, you'll see the back of L3 lines up with the back of L4, but at L4, L5, there's this little step off or a staircase. I've drawn lines out to show you how these bones line up, these bones line up, but between L4 and L5, there's that step off. Now remember, bones are named by number. For example, L4 and L5. The disc is named by the bones that sandwich it. This is the L4-5 disc because it's the disc between the L4 and L5 bones. And that is the displacement that is measured. Spondylolisthesis is graded in two different ways. The first is a grading system where we grade it from one through four with four being the most severe. The system starts by dividing the bottom bone, which is the L5 bone, into quarters, or 25%, 50%, and 75%. We then look at the amount of slippage of one bone relative to the next. For a grade one degenerative spondylolisthesis, the slippage is less than 25% of one bone relative to the next. For a grade two, between 25 and 50%, and a grade three, between 50 to 75%, and a grade four, which is the most severe, over 75%. The second way of describing degenerative spondylolisthesis is by simply measuring the number of millimeters that one bone is slipped in front of another. Here you'll see that we've marked out the back of the L4 bone and the back of the L5 bone, and we simply measure the displacement, which is 10 millimeters here. So you may see this slippage described as simply 10 millimeters of spondylolisthesis of L4 on top of L5. If you want to grade this slip like we did earlier, you can see that the displacement of 10 millimeters happens to fall between the 25% and 50% line, which would be described as a grade two spondylolisthesis.
In our world, which is the surgeon's world, there's grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four. Grade one is mild, grade two is a little bit more, three and four are severe. It really has to do with the amount of translation there is. And you can talk to your physician about what grade spondylolisthesis you have. In addition to x-ray, MRI is very important also because the MRI not only shows us the slippage, but it also shows us how much the nerve is being compressed by that slippage. I'm gonna show you the MRI of a patient that has an L4-5 spondylolisthesis, and the reason I'm showing L4-5 is because that is by far the most common level to have a degenerative spondylolisthesis. Here's a good example of the MRI. So this is the side view, <clears throat> which is called the sagittal view. So there's the back, the buttock, the belly. These are L4 bone, there's the L5 bone. And again, I've drawn the back of the L3 bone, L4 bone, and there you see that little step off to L5 and S1. Interestingly, this is the same MRI of the patient that you previously saw uh, an X-ray of. This is the cross-section view. And so this is laying flat, looking from bottom up. So looking through the spine, this is the opening where the nerves should be, and this is a cross-section of all four or five. I'd encourage you to watch the Spine Guy video on how to read a lumbar MRI. If you do, you'll be able to understand this, but this is the disc at L4-5, and this kind of triangle here is where the nerve should be. This is what's called the facet joint, and the facet joint are the joints that connect the bones in the back, so this would be the L4-L5 facet. And obviously, if there's a lot of instability or abnormal motion, the facet joints really start to open up. So when you look at a cross-section of the facet joints, you'll see that there's a lot of really abnormal fluid or opening in the facet joints. The bigger thing to notice here is the amount of stenosis. Stenosis is a fancy word for narrowing. This area are where the nerves are being pinched, and you can kind of see it corresponding here with this hourglassing and pinching of the nerves. Really what it's supposed to look like is this. This whole area is supposed to be open, but you can see that's kind of closed down in this very narrow space. Spondylolisthesis is a dynamic problem, meaning the bones are slipping and sliding, and, and they're slipping and sliding depending on how much gravity there is. It is super important to get what's called a flexion extension x-ray, or at least a standing x-ray, because that shows how much instability there is when you're standing up. Patients with spondylolisthesis often feel great where they're laying flat because that spondylolisthesis, when there's no gravity when you're laying flat, has reduced in its level, whereas when you stand up and there's gravity, the spine all of a sudden slips. So here's an upright x-ray. This is a patient standing like that. And you can see there's a step off between L4 and L5. There's that kind of staircasing. This is the same patient's MRI. What's super interesting is the back of L4 is almost completely lined up with the back of L5. So one would say when looking at this MRI that yes, there's a little bit of narrowing here, but really there's not a lot of instability and not a lot of step off. So how can this be the same patient? The reason it's the same patient is because an MRI is done when you're laying flat. There's no gravity. Once patient stands up and there's gravity, you can see that the spine all of a sudden slips. So just looking at an MRI isn't good enough for a degenerative spondylolisthesis you really have to get that standing gravity view to see how much the spine slips so we can make a judgment on treatment and diagnosis. If you wanna go one step further, I always get what's called a forward flexion x-ray. So this is a regular standing x-ray like that with a patient on its side. This is a forward flexion x-ray, which is what we tell the patients to keep their knees straight, bend down and try to touch their toes as best we can like that. So on a forward flexion x-ray, there's the back, there's the buttock, there's the belly. And now when you look at the step off, you can really see how there's the back of L4, there's the back of L5, and there's a significant translation of the L4 bone on the L5 bone. Well, why is that important? That's important because the treatment, particularly surgically of a degenerative spondylolisthesis, really has to do with how mobile it is, meaning how much it shifts back and forth with gravity and with flexion. So if you are getting evaluated for degenerative spondylolisthesis, you really need to insist on at least an x-ray, if not a good flexion and extension x-ray. What are the symptoms for degenerative spondylolisthesis? Typically it's back pain and leg pain. So what does the back pain come from? The back pain comes because there's instability secondary to changes in the facet joint. This facet joint becomes arthritic 
as there's more instability and more abnormal slippage, there's more arthritis. And it's kind of this downstream effect where you get increasing, increasing amounts of arthritis in the facet joint. And as a result, sometimes you can get degeneration in the disc and the degeneration in the disc also causes back pain. So just the abnormal arthritis, the instability, the disc issues can cause back pain. Most patients, frankly, can live with back pain. What they cannot live with is the buttock and leg pain that come about as a result of the spondylolisthesis. The spondylolisthesis, as you saw, can cause stenosis, which is narrowing. As there's abnormal motion, what happens is the nerve gets compressed where the instability is. And in fact, the more instability is, the more compression there is. Nerve compression causes buttock and leg pain, sciatica, cramping down the legs, pins, needles, numbness, and patients tend to not like to walk long distances because as they walk, the bone is slipping and compressing the nerve. They often have to sit down or lay flat to feel better. And weakness in the legs and the ankles and the quadriceps can also be a really common symptom. Hopefully you learned a little bit about what a degenerative spondylolisthesis is and the word spondylolisthesis isn't as confusing. And the next episode we'll be talking about the non-surgical treatments of degenerative spondylolisthesis. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click the like button and leave questions or feedback in the comment box below. Feel free to let me know what videos you would like to see in the future.